Good evening, wonderful people. Great dear friends, wherever you are, on the face of this very planet Earth, especially those of you watching me live on Instagram. I welcome each and every one of you. And as I do welcome you, as always, I will ask you to welcome those around you. The time now is precisely one, should I say, two minutes past 7 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra. And as you say, by the same number of minutes past the top of the hour, regardless of where you are, I welcome you by saying good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you, because unlike any other, this very broadcast, simulcast on multiple platforms, this very day, morning, noon, or night, depending on where you are, is being relayed right across the face of this very planet Earth. A lot of people are watching, a lot of people are listening, and many of you will be blessed as a result of it. And as I do welcome you, please endeavor, or should I say, try to welcome other people as well. As you know, Facebook is doing their best to try to suppress what we are doing. They are trying to frustrate us into submission that we may not be able to broadcast as Chipo Kikabi Ama has made us to, but they have failed very, very woefully and they will continue to fail. Today's date is the eighth day of March in the year of our most high Elohim 2021. My name is Nnam Kano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra all over the world, the director of radio Biafra and Biafra television, and by the very special grace of the most high Elohim, a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. Regardless of where you are, as I said earlier, we are welcoming you and we are going to pray as it is customary for us to do here. If you want to see me live, <laughs> or should I say, no, yeah, see me, I should say, not just hear my voice. You go to my Instagram handle, I should say. It is Mazinamdekan underscore, you know, the slash that is at the bottom, underscore official. A lot of people, I wouldn't say a lot of people, there are about how many of you? I think about 99 people are now watching. Am I correct? Yes, I think roughly about that. And um, it's owned by Facebook as well, incidentally. So it won't surprise me if they try to kick us out sometime during the course of this very, I should say, enlightening program this very evening. Once again, I welcome each and every one of you. And before we proceed, we are going to pray, as it is usual with us here on this platform. We pray because we are nothing without the almighty Chukukikabi Amapurumi Hanina. We are going to offer praise and adoration to him as always. And I will, of course, should I say unfailingly pray in the language of heaven. Some may misunderstand, some of them may try to misconstrue where one thing is certain right now in the presence of the almighty God, Elohim Adonai El Shaddai in heaven. The angels are singing, worshiping and praising the Most High, with the very oldest language on the face of this very earthy language. And that's how I'm going to pray. As you know, one in a chine can and kept rumian in a chukoki cab, Yamabonia in the Fenagosa Hansa, you know, Banania Nachi, Dona Mona Madden, Ruberisi, Dona Banania Bocaca, the Botanica, I need to get everybody in Gozi, Malitan or Google. Ndi bo we tu ge bi ge bi onye mwe mu mu ge we gba ko no wa ni na iwe na no zi o ma nke ge o ma ge na ezi ha si na no ma do den na nke bere den gozi anye we na si no we ha o ma ge bere den gozi no ba no pa ko so so ma li te no ogu o fu gbo cha anye ndi bo we tu ge so ke na de ma ru mbe bi ge ni hi no ku ni ne ga bere na me so o bi am na bi afra ge ju we be na gbe nka anye anye we na ko ku we na ro ge na si le ku den ka anye na so na kwa nka anye na be ko me ta ge no bi Donya ngom na chine ken na nki gwe bi kon di kisi we na to muwe na obu ni Egypt kwata we we zugo muwe bonde bi afra ngude kwen suguzu ke mara din duke anyi we na jagemma na ase ni mondo danyi ni anke kele hanso we nje gen sopru no to ni jamma mbeni ni ni na nya we choze bozu ga anyo manya na ge farosi obi munu juwe na gozin so mu kwanyi ni ni obi amere IPO bi juwe gba ngoro bu no wani na yana ga to gumare den du anyi we ne to geze bu den ko sigi bi ko batan no se anyi mako obi na ne ge bo nya nyi de fo manya ku isi ala nya Give a nap of Tandy, no punky quinsu. And you win and you will finish Nansop or Niger Manassi, Le Quack and Dew Langin in the Cacassus with a horn. How it happened, you could also open your principles, you are opening years of bread and gossip. I know one of them, we were not open hands of the Nasmith, which was a good guy. 
and you were not Jagama with Nato, and I saw Nakari in the Kraken, and I wrote to Tony and I saw the Nature Money in the City Navy, and my Raven can I do. He said, He said, He said, Having handed over our proceedings to heaven, we must therefore proceed unfailingly and very speedily to preach this very gospel that we have been mandated to preach this very day because heaven and earth will bear us witness that they came in their time and the gospel of redemption was preached and men were saved from their folly. This evening I will start by calling upon Bishop Coker or should I say all the Catholics around the world to please warn Bishop Coker to desist from making statements and comments that will annoy God Almighty in heaven. If he continues in the manner that we have deduced he is likely to follow, then I will place cross on him in public. I, I'm not saying this very lightly because he's that a will man annoy that God I have Almighty in regard and respect for. Bishop if Coker, he continues in the manner that I love him immensely. But he came up with some statements which are, should I say, unbecoming of a sensible, reasonable human being. Therefore, he must retrace his steps. We must also remind ourselves that a few days ago, I said something about those of them trying their damnest best to try to keep Nigeria together. A zoological republic that should not exist in the first place. And this evening, I want to reinforce this very fact that the curse that I placed upon the United Kingdom, a people that I revere and I love very much, people that I hold their citizenship and have sworn allegiance to, and will continue to defend their interests, genuine interest, of course, because I am an Anglophile at heart. That's very Britain today. It is not been up to seven days that I made that statement live here on air. The leader of the Welsh people have come out to make a categorical statement that Britain no longer exists in their own thinking. This is what I want to guide the thinking of all our people. I want it to guide our understanding of what is happening in the zoo and to understand also the spiritual dimension which we have chosen to pursue this very noble cause. According to Mark Drakeford, who is the leader of the Welsh people in the UK, and I put, the United Kingdom is over, he said. UK, as I told you a few days ago, that anybody who has a hand or who is trying to keep Nigeria together, their kingdom or their entity will disintegrate. These are the things that I want you to understand this very evening, that Nigeria has expired. The wrath of Almighty God is upon Nigeria. Look at Tinubu, for example, what the Yorubas are going through on his account. Look at how the Christian managers in the north are being slaughtered and brutally massacred by the Janjaweed elements of the Caliphate. Because the likes of Bishop Koka is there preaching unity that he knows doesn't exist. Because Britain is directly involved in trying to keep together what God Almighty has rendered asunder. That is the reason why Mark Gregford has come out to say that United Kingdom is over. He's a very heavyweight politician in the UK, the leader of the Welsh people. He is the first minister in trying to keep the Welsh people together Wales, what God course. Almighty has rendered He's a principality. That is the reason why Mark is supposed to be has come out to the say Prince of Wales, that United Kingdom say, is over. He's a very heavyweight politician in the UK, the leader of the Welsh people. He is the first minister of the Welsh people. Wales, of course. In the UK is a principality, and mind you, Prince Charles is supposed to be the Prince of Wales, or should I say, the titular head of the government of Wales people. But here we have Mark Drakeford saying it categorically that Britain is over. And I want Britain. If you continue to meddle in the affairs of Nigeria to the extent whereby you are presenting a stumbling block, emancipation of the children of God, the children of light, United Kingdom will be decimated. Because you are very proud and very arrogant, because you think that your Caucasian, you are white, you can do anything and get away with it. You may think that the disintegration of the UK has nothing to do with Biafra, but I can assure you categorically that it has. 
If you do not stop meddling in Nigeria, if you do not stop these, your, should I say, perverted racist devotion to keeping people who shouldn't be one together in one monstrous entity called the Zoological Republic of Nigeria, believe you me, God Almighty in heaven will destroy Britain beyond recognition. And it started to happen already. It is happening already. I warned you and I told you, you may disregard the agitation for Biafra and tag it as nothing. Because you came, you saw, you conquered and you colonized. But I'm warning you today, if you continue, the wrath of God will be upon you. As I warned the zoo many, many years ago, if you don't allow we Biafrans to go, that zoological republic called Nigeria will be a worse place than Somalia. And today it is happening. And if you have not applied for your Somalian visa, please try and do so. Should I say Somali visa? Try and do so as quickly as possible because the zoo is on the path of destruction. And there is nothing man can do to reverse it. Mark today's date and what I'm telling you. Nigeria will be destroyed beyond human comprehension. So says the Lord of hosts. Anything I tell you here is gospel. Anything I open my mouth to tell you must come to pass. Because Almighty determined that we should come. And we have come to preach this very gospel in truth and in every honesty. And I want Britain to understand this today. If you stand as an obstacle on the path of Biafra freedom, you will be destroyed. The same way that the late dead Buhari tried. Buhari tried to stop Biafra from coming. Today he's in a shallow grave in Saudi Arabia. Not only that, that kingdom he was trying to build is now shaking. That very kingdom, that very Fulani Caliphate, the Fulani takeover of Nigeria is in tatters. Because we are here, or should I say, Chukwoke Kabiyama determined that we should come. And nothing, absolutely nothing is going to stop us from performing the will of the Almighty. Today, I can tell you categorically that in the United Kingdom, the first minister of Wales, part and parcel of this United Kingdom that colonized, enslaved, subjugated, and still colonizing the zoo called Nigeria till today, a part of Britain have now said that they're going to divide. They will leave. Scotland will leave. Wales will leave. Northern Ireland will join the Irish Republic. And you only have the little England at last. And when all these things are happening to them because of their pride and ego, they will not acknowledge that the work they did against the children of God in Biafra land is what is responsible for their demise as a once great nation or a once great people. They are also on the path of decline and nothing can reverse it unless they stop meddling in the affairs of Biafra. The United Kingdom is over and a new union should be crafted to reflect a voluntary association of four nations. In other words, Britain will no longer exist. You have England, you have Wales, you have Scotland, and you have Northern Ireland. The reason for that is because they meddled in the affairs of the children of God. As I told you earlier, Almighty God in heaven has a way of punishing his children. And we have been roundly punished, believe you me. If you have to be subjugated under the very cruel, barbaric rule of Fulani Janja Buddhism, you will understand what we are talking about. As I'm speaking to you right now, most villages are under siege. There are killings and rapings, abductions and murder going on right across the length and breadth of the Zoological Republic. But they cannot understand what is happening to them. They know that the problem of insecurity in Nigeria is intractable for the simple reason that they have allowed, failed, should I say, to allow Biafra to go. The sooner they understand this or realize this, the better for everybody. But I'm not sure they will because they are very stubborn. And as God hardened the heart of Pharaoh to fail, so are they also going to fail. And that is why those of them who are in Benue State, that is why the likes of Governor Autumn or the very young man who was mouthing his rubbish um, a day or two ago concerning the deployment of Eastern Security Network into Lower Benue is in for a very, very difficult and horrible experience of their lives. I must warn also Governor Autumn of Benue State. I am not laying claim to Benue State, the entirety of Benue State, not at all. 
what I'm making very clear to you is that there are Igbo people, Igbo communities, not traders, not migrants, not settlers, no. These are our traditional towns, communities and villages wickedly gerrymandered into the north. That you have Igbo people today answering Igbo names, speaking Igbo language, who are answering to Londoners. An abomination before God Almighty in heaven. I will not allow it to continue. Those Igbo speaking parts of Benue State is part and parcel of Biafra. Part and parcel of the Eastern region. And should anything happen to them, if you fail to control Fulani incursion into that very territory, then ESN will continue to do their work. And I have commended them earlier and allow me to do so again at this very moment. I commend the men and women, not just of our high command, but also of the Eastern Security Network that successfully pursued and apprehended a notorious Fulani bandit by the name Mohammed Issa. We have the videos. For those of them claiming he's an old man, they're all lying, and they know it very well. He is the leader of a gang of abductors, of rapists, and of murderers, tormenting our farming communities. But I'm glad to report this very evening morning or not, depending on where you are, that that menace, that threat has been permanently put to bed. It will no longer happen. Should our people in Benue State be subjected to further attacks, I am also informing Governor Autumn of Benue State. I will make sure that ESN returns to that very area. Or should I say, come out of the bushes to confront whoever comes against the children of the Most High God, Elohim in heaven. This is a warning to all of you. For those of you that specialize in, should I say, in twisting the obvious, in turning truth into lies, I never claimed the whole of Benue State. You people carved Igbo people into Benue, which is unacceptable. We are in an era, not that of the old, compromised, and discredited Ohanese and Diyaranandiyoshi, not in that very era. No, we are not in that anymore. We are not in the era of compromised governors in the pocket of the Fulani Caliphate, no. We are now in the era of IPOB. And no inch of territory belonging to traditional, should I say, ethnicities making up Biafra will be surrendered to anybody, no. And in Benue State, we have taught them, while they were discussing that, uh, don't come to Benue, we are already on the ground in Benue State, in the world and we are not in Benue State that doesn't belong to us. We are in Igbo parts of Benue State, Igbo communities of Benue State, and we are there to defend them, and that is precisely what we are going to do, and nobody is going to discourage us otherwise. We are making it very clear today that the Eastern Security Network is on the ground. We are on the ground in Benue State, and in every part of Biafalan for that matter. We are in Cross River, we are in Akwaibon, we are in Bayosa. Everywhere it is happening. Anywhere we confront Fulani, headsmen, these terrorists, we will drive them away. Be rest assured, we are not going to rest one iota until our farmlands, our homes, and our forests are secure. What is happening in Yoruba land cannot happen in Biafra land. Nobody, no idiot can come from anywhere to claim any inch or parcel of Biafran forest. It is, not, it is not doable. Instead, we all die there. That is why I am making this presentation live, at least for those of you who may be able to come over on Instagram, that I am on Instagram and I'm live. If you want to see a live video of this very broadcast, it is there. You can and should be able to see it. Anywhere in Biafra land we confront Fulani terrorists, we shall meet them head on. We know that they are part of the police and the army. Danjuma himself, General T.Y. Danjuma himself, testified before the British Parliament that the army of Nigeria and the police are colluding in the conquest of indigenous populations in Nigeria. And we are no exception to that very horrible and sinister conspiracy. The police we have in our land are terrorists in uniform. The army we have in Biafra land are basically terrorists. They are there to aid and to support Fulani Janja with advancement to the Atlantic Ocean. 
and we are there to stop them and we are stopping them and we'll continue to stop them a few days ago as i said we embedded our men and women of the northern command of eastern security network when we said northern command people were confused biafra land is a nation we have northern biafra we have central we have the south which is the coastal region we have the east and we have the west when i talk about the northern command i'm talking about the northern part of biafra land which incidentally starts from benue state so we are right to be there if you don't want us to be in benue state quietly go back to abuja and appeal to them tell them to release Igbo people in Benue and carve them back into a Boeing state where they should belong or any good state as the case may be. Therefore, anybody, you know, one thing about Nigeria is that they tend to defend the aggressor. It's in the, it's in the, it is in the DNA in Nigeria to always support evil. That is why this very newspaper publication, I don't have a means of putting it here on Instagram where I am broadcasting live, where you can see my face and my facial expression, but it, is, it will be on my Facebook page. If you go there, you will see it. This publication was made on January 23 of 2021, this very year. It is a front page news by Vanguard. I want you to understand how an average Nigerian thinks, how the reason why I think that Nigeria itself is a curse upon humanity. There on the front page, you will see, we will kill all policemen and take over a those state, Fulani and Janjaweed, those they claim are foreigners. These people they told us are foreigners. They come from Mali, from, from, from Senegal, from Gambia, from heaven knows where, from Niger, from Chad, from Northern Cameroons. But they are in Nigeria killing people. After killing us, they will not turn around and tell us to absorb them into our communities. That is why anybody, any Igwe, any PG, any greedy, avaricious fool, stupid enough to give any of our land to Fulani Janjaweed, you are finished. That was a man in Enugu that tried to say nonsense. Go and ask him where he is today. We take no prisoners. You see, the land of Biafra must be defended at all costs. At all costs. It is the land of God given to his children for their eternal habitation. To recognize this very fact, but now that this generation has come, there is nothing anybody can do to stop us from restoring the kingdom of God upon the face of this very earth in the land of Biafra, without apologies to anybody. I understand that the Sarikin, whatever, Sarikin for ambassador to Nigeria in Lagos a few days ago. And according to the message, or should I say information coming out of the U.S. mission, they said is to foster cohabitation and unity, that diversity is strength. And I want to lay that particular nonsensical narrative to bed tonight before I continue any further. Anybody telling you about strength and diversity, that person is a liar and a deceiver. And the U.S. ambassador is a liar and a deceiver. One thing they don't teach we Africans is this. No country exists on a foundation of multiculturalism that is no, nowhere in the world. Listen to me very carefully. All this nonsense, even the, the, the crap that Coca was coming up with, telling you about diversity is our strength and other rubbish. Allow me to repeat. There is no country on this earth that survives on a foundation or a bedrock of multiculturalism, it doesn't exist. That is why multiculturalism in Africa is dead on arrival, it can never work. Because we are tribal beasts by nature. We are tribal by nature. That is why we travel from wherever we are during New Year's, during Christmas, during Easter, during New Year Festival to go back home where we come from. Because that is where we identify with. Now, let me ask the US ambassador a very simple question. Is United States of America a multicultural society? U.S. that was created and built by Western Europeans. U.S. was created, should I say, created by God, of course. Built by Western Europeans. Mostly English people that was fed up with the way of life of the English monarchy. They went to America on Mary Rose. I want to ask the U.S. ambassador, I want to teach Africans what they don't know this evening. 
There is no country that functions on this multi-ethnic rubbish. It, nowhere in the world, not even the USA, that was created by people who are not indigenous to America. The owners of the soil of America are Native American Indians. That is a fact of life. God gave America to Western Europe to develop and gave them a special grace to be the beacon and the light and the conscience of the world. Because God knew that if he had left all these wonderful people in Europe, they would become contaminated. He removed them from Europe, sent them to America, built a wonderful nation as a shining light and a beacon for the whole world to look up to. Even that America that was built from scratch by people who are not indigenous to the land is not multicultural. Why am I saying this? America was founded on the principles of Judeo-Christian, Greco-Roman democratic value systems. I repeat, America is not multicultural. They accommodate other races and other nations. Yes, they can accommodate you. But where you're coming into, the bedrock, the foundation of America is based on Judeo-Christian principles, Greco-Roman political ideology, which is republicanism. America is not multicultural. America is Western Europe. The value systems of Western Europe, Judeo-Christian, Greco-Roman republican governance. Had America been a multicultural society, they would have space for Sharia. I'm now addressing the U.S. ambassador to try to tell them to stop deceiving people. We are educated, we went to school for a reason. We are enlightened and we have our brain intact. There is no country on this earth that runs on this wishy-washy multiculturalism. It doesn't happen. What you have are established order and value systems upon which various cultures can now coexist. If you go to America, you coexist under the provisions of the United States Constitution. And the U.S. Constitution is a Christian Constitution, not Islam. America is not multicultural. But under that bedrock of liberty and egalitarianism, you allow other cultures to come in but first of all, they must wear allegiance to the or take an oath to uphold the Constitution of the USA. That is something that the U.S. Ambassador never told the ginger with that went to visit her. The same way that Nigeria cannot function as a viable entity. Willis Shoenka knows what I'm talking about. I'm even sure somebody who claims he's learned, as, as Bishop Coker is, understands what I'm talking about. No country on this earth. The value system of the state of Israel is based on Judaic principles. The value system of Russia is entirely theirs. It's based on theirs. It's a Russian way of doing things from time, from times of the Tsar. If you go to Saudi Arabia, it is essentially a Sharia Islamic state. You can live there, no, no problem. You can build your churches if you want. I think they have not allowed to allow churches to be built. But it is never, never a multicultural society. Japan is not. A multicultural society. China is not. They can accommodate you, but that doesn't mean they are multi. This, are, this is type of nonsense they feed Africans, and we fall for that very gimmick of multiculturalism. At the end of the day, you end up with a useless contraption like Nigeria. You don't have any value system that anybody anywhere can define. If I talk about the USA, I can talk about hamburger in the USA. We can talk about what else do they have in the USA? Hamburger, you can talk about um, what's it called? What are the traditional dishes? Um, apple pie and all the rest of it. You can say that these are American dishes. If you go to the UK, you can talk about maybe mashed potato and bangers and mash, which is sausage and mashed potato as their national meal. That's understandable. But I ask you if you come to Nigeria, what is the national dish of Nigeria? Does a Fulani Janja with eat a Fergusi, where we come from? Does an Igbo man eat a Wedu soup? The answer is no. So on what basis is all this so-called multicultural foundation going to be laid upon? On what? We are not one people. We may be black, we may be Africans, but we're not one people. 
Not even one religion. If Britain cannot stay in an EU that is entirely Christian, EU is entirely Christian. Britain left. Nigeria, you don't know if Nigeria is Christian or in fact is Islamic. So for me to accept the multiculturalism being preached by the U.S. ambassador, I have to embrace Islam as my religion. That's what it means. And some of you get taken in by all this rubbish. And I feel sorry for you. Yeah, sometimes when I say it, they say I'm being very arrogant. If you are educated, you will understand that no nation is multicultural. They allow other cultures to come in. It doesn't mean they're multicultural. They have a viable space where multicultural ideas or identities can thrive. But the foundation has to be monolithic. It has to be one dominant value system and ideology. That's how it is all over the world. Don't let anybody fool you otherwise. That is the same reason why you have this, this, this anomaly. In a so-called, in a so-called republic, you have royal fathers in a republic. Because you are trying to shuffle multiculturalism. You are trying to marry the feudal system of the north, the monarchical system of the west, and the republican um, um, system in the east. To marry them into one. And what you have is entirely rubbish. And that is why Nigeria can never work. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. Competing value systems. Nobody wants their own value system to be subsumed under another person's value system. This is something that the U.S. ambassador never told you. But here I am telling you today. Because if you come here, you become educated. If you come here, you become enlightened. If you come here, you stop being a zoo animal. You become a human being. That is why we are the largest and, of course, the most consistent broadcasting platform insofar as Africa is concerned. Right across the world, millions listen to us because they know we preach the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. That is why this very day, because you are in one Nigeria, in multiculturalism, the army will come to Olo to defend Fulani Janja with living in our forests. We went to Olo to defend our people. They came, they arrested the clerics. Men of God, they arrested all of them. How many times have you heard that imams were being arrested in the north? Or that villages were being invaded in the north and the imams being arrested? Only in Biafra land. And this is your multiculturalism. This is a place where you want all of us to stay somehow to pretend that all is well when we know that it is not. In that same Nigeria, is where Fulani headsmen openly boast about conquest. Benue State is one. That is why I feel sorry for the idiots talking rubbish from Benue. They came and they made the same bold claim on Edo State. And I quote, We will kill all policemen and take over Edo State. Vanguard publication of January 23, 2021, this year. Only two months ago. Nothing happened to them. Only the Fulanis can lay claim to land that doesn't belong to them and nobody will say anything. When you, when you try to respond, they come against you. And your average foolish Nigerian who cannot reason properly, you know, they're not educated very well, I'm sorry to say, will side with the oppressor. It's only in Nigeria where the victim becomes the accused. You came into Olo, Hope was the matter to give you land in Olo to build a Fulani settlement. And we said no to it. That's all. To talk about Olo crisis. And now they're trying to blame IPOB, they're trying to blame Eastern Security Network. But all of you are aware of the fact that Nigeria Army and Nigeria Police are essentially Fulani Janja with terrorists in uniform. The newspapers, all the articles, everywhere, the political, the, the national discourse is replete with instances of Fulani being supplied by the military, as I'm going to, as you're going to listen to later on. But nothing happens when you try to fight back, you become the victim. And we are saying we are fed up of being victims. We can no longer be victims anymore. If you kill us, we will kill you. I'm saying it live on video, so you can share the video all over the world if you want. If you come to our land to kill us, we will kill you. As simple as that. It may take us some time, but eventually we will overwhelm you. Well, in the end, we always win. As I warned them in Benue, we are in Benue. In all of our countries in Benue State, and we're not living there. Until we are certain that the lives and properties of our people there are firmly secured. Any day we learn to stop blaming the victims, this world will be a better place. I'm directing this very um, um, statement to the U.S. Ambassador, to the U.K. High Commissioner, to the EU presence in the, in, the, in the zoo, and the U.N. as well. I know all of you will do nothing. 
We are not Muslims, so you're not going to help us. That, that's obvious. We know that for sure. But we have something that you do not have. We have the grace, the might, and protection of God Almighty in heaven. And we know that God exists. And as long as he lives, as my name is in Namde, my Redeemer lives, as long as God lives in heaven, all of you can never triumph against us. Ujiku said it before. And you said he failed. We know why he failed, because God said the time wasn't right. I want to show them, my children, what is called Biafra, that very kingdom. They have to fight their way into it. If that is the option you leave for us, then by all means, we will oblige you. But Biafra must come, or we all die. It's as simple as that. There is no alternative. People must understand the rage that is boiling within us. You must understand how angry we are. We may look normal to you, but we are very, very angry, believe you me. And by the time we are done with Nigeria, the name won't exist. That I can assure you. You people are now beginning to see the type of madness that we are capable of unleashing. And more is coming. And I do not hide it because you hate us anyway. This conspiracy against Biafra for no reason we've done nothing wrong to anyone. But you despise us and you hate us. You want us to die because God gave us oil and gas. You won't take over our land. It's not going to happen. And we're not apologizing nor begging anybody to please uh, read this letter. They are raping our women. They raped our women. Did you do anything about it? They went to the UK High Commissioner. They were telling them, oh, we can't do anything about it. R rape victims. But you're doing something about defending Fulani. You are defending Fulani. But rape victims in front of you cannot defend them. And you're neutral. And you want Nigeria to continue. So you want me to stay in a Nigeria where my women will be raped every day. Nobody will do anything about it. And I'll be clapping for you. One Nigeria, I'll be clapping for you. Check it up, no Mad people everywhere. People are insane. You want me to stay in a country where the Fulani police and soldiers can come and take our women, rape them anyhow they like, even before they release them, they charge you. Do you know how much we have spent? We have spent nearly 9 million naira to secure the release of people who were abducted and raped. Victims of state crime. Britain didn't say anything. UN never uttered a word. EU, nothing. US, nothing. And you want me to be in that country? I think some people are mad. Very, very insane indeed. If you do not believe in what we are doing, then you better get out. We're not going to stop. God knows we can never stop until Biafra is restored. We are peace-loving people. We abhor death and killing of another soul. It's in our nature, that's how we are. But because of that, they have been calling, coming and killing us all these years. We've kept quiet. They've been killing and killing and killing quiet. We have a case at the ICC. We have a case at Africa Union. We have a case of, um, what else again? In, in, in um, pending before, before the UN in New York. We've been to Geneva to tender our case. Before UN, till today, nothing. In fact, the more we complain to them, the more they come to abduct and rape our children, the more they come to kill us, the more they want to take over our land and our forest. And who told them that's going to be possible in our time? In a time in a movement that I lead, you think you can come into our land and take it over? <laughs> oh dear. That means you don't know who we are. 30 pastors arrested for doing nothing. Have you heard about any imams being arrested in the north? No. Do you want me to stay in one Nigeria with you? After this level of injustice? Is that what you think? No, it is not going to happen. Not now, not tomorrow. There are two things plaguing them in the zoo. Lies and deceit. If not for the coming of IPOB, of Radio Biafra, all of you would have lived and died in the ignorance that Ojuku caused a war. That's what they were writing. Britain helped them to write it. Ojuku was a rebel, a secessionist, because we had no media. That is why they are paying Facebook billions upon billions of US dollars to stop this truth from coming out. Did Ojuku cause any war? Go on is alive, go and ask him. 
Did Ojuku cause any war? Ojuku went and negotiated restructuring with you. In Aburi, you came back. Britain told you not to agree because Britain realized that all the component units of Britain knows that if you go back to regionalism, you have economic growth. The country will do very well. But Britain doesn't want it. That was why they even instigated the Nzoguku, so called Nzoguku, saying they would bring Awolowo to become the head of state. They knew what was going to happen. They wanted to truncate the economic miracle of Dr. Mike Hello. But what I'm telling you are fast. Go and investigate for yourself. In the East, you had the fastest growing economy in the whole world, over 40% every year. In the West, Awolowo was performing his own miracle as well. Even in the North, Ahmad Abuela and Tafabale were doing very well. You had all those massive industries in the north. You even had alamajiris that were employed in the north. Meaningfully employed, gainfully employed. They were all doing very well. Britain said, no, for us to control these people, we need to impoverish them. Let us introduce this war. That was a coup by Nzow. And after that, there was the massacre of, as usual, massacre of our people in the north. Ujuku said, I have to secure my land and my people. They said, no, let's go to Aburi to discuss it. Ujuku went to Aburi and agreed, restructuring. That's something now you're asking for, to tell you how foolish Nigerians are. They're very foolish. That same nonsense you're asking for now was discussed many years ago. Ujuku sat down in Aburi with Gowon and decided that regionalism was the best way forward, restructuring, going back to who you were, 1963 constitution, 1960-1963 constitution. Be on your own and pay tax to the central government, as they have in America, as they have even in Britain. Britain, you have Scotland that is almost independent, Wales, the same thing, everybody is free, but Britain doesn't want the same thing they're enjoying to happen in Nigeria. Why? Ask yourself that question. Anybody telling you about one Nigeria is your enemy? I'll prove it to you now. Ujuku negotiated devolution, regionalism, the North will be on their own, the West on their own, even Middle Belt on their, sorry, Midwest on their own, and then the East on their own. It's the same one Nigeria. On, on their way to the airport, before they boarded the aircraft, a call came from Lagos, from the British High Commissioner in Lagos, to go on, telling go on not to agree. After having signed the agreement, that same go on you're looking at today, God kept me alive so that he can witness the destruction he will bring upon that very zoo called Nigeria. Go on said no. Do you know all the journalists in Nigeria? None of them have ever gone to has ever gone to go on to ask him why did he say no to Aburi? Aburi was restructuring. None of those agitating for restructuring right now has ever gone to go on or gone to Nigeria to say that Ujuku negotiated restructuring. What happened? They came back and they said no. Ujuku said, okay, so you want to continue to kill my people all over the place? No, because of that, I'll declare Biafra. Today, they have brainwashed all of you with the perverse notion and thinking that somehow Ujuku is responsible for causing a war when opposite is the case. If not now, that after many years of hammering on this very topic, it has now sunk into the skull of the people that go on was the aggressor, not Ujuku. That's how Nigeria is, always blaming the victim. And we lost over 5 million people during that very genocidal war. They killed over 5 million Biafrans. They wanted to wipe us away from the face of this very earth. But we survived it, and we are here today. Those they gave birth to, they have come. And this time with a wrath that you cannot even begin to imagine. And Biafra must come. It must come. Two things are bothering the zoo right now. You know, when God wants to destroy a nation, it comes in many ways. One, Buhari is dead. They brought in a fake. It is now dawning on the people very slowly that there is no more Buhari. It's, people are now beginning to rise it. What I find astonishing are people that they claim are stakeholders in the zoo, those who should know better, those who should be, who should be, should I say, lead this very campaign to uncover the truth. They are all running away. They are all hiding. Do you know why they are hiding? Because the people talking about a late dead Buhari are those 
that oil and gas come from their region. And they all think that they need oil and gas to survive. That is why they're all quiet. If not that Dino Malaya came out a few days ago, of course, Obasanjo said it. Even Aisha Buhari said it. And the husband is dead. They all pretended as if they didn't know. And we know that Buhari is dead. And when that very issue erupts the way and manner it would later on in the coming weeks and months, the zoo cannot contain the fallout. That is number one. Number two is that everybody keeps talking about uh, there, is, there seems to be no government, there is no direction because Buhari is not there. That is why you have no direction. That is why the country seems to be drifting. That is why there is no sense of purpose. No cohesion because there is no Buhari. So what you have are competing interests and ideas from the Fulani cabal that is ruling the zoo, ruling all of you. You know that that little boy is not Buhari, everybody knows that. How many Buharis are you going to have before you begin to reason and begin to think? When I said it, they say it was conspiracy theory, and I said with time, today people are coming out to confirm what we have always known. What we have always known, that Buhari is dead. That is why you have what is called a drift in the government. That is why there is no clear focus, there is no clear cut direction, not at all. If not that I talked about Aisha Buhari in my last broadcast, I wouldn't have brought her out today to speak. And she only issued a statement. Nobody saw her. She's in Dubai having fun with her boyfriend, your first lady. And I asked them, in whose reign or regime in Nigeria or anywhere else in the world do you have a first lady missing in office? Only in Nigeria. But you as a Nigerian cannot ask any questions because of the way you reason. The problem you have as a Nigerian is in your brain. The way you reason is flawed. Ask yourself this question. If this woman's husband is alive, what is she doing in Dubai? And with who in Dubai? Simple question. But you can't ask yourself that question because you're a Nigerian. Sometimes you don't reason very well. It is not meant to be an insult. I'm just telling you the fact of life. Buhari is not no longer alive. The various Fulani groups within, some are sponsoring terrorists from all over the place to come to your land to kill you. And you want to be in the same country with the same people that imported terrorists to come to kill you. I, I don't understand it. I, you see, I am struggling to understand how some of you reason. They call themselves your patriots. They say that you are Nigerians. Is that correct? Why would a fellow Nigerian go outside to the Sahel to pay people to come to kill you? They are fellow Nigerian. And after killing you, they say that those murderers and killers are now entitled to live in your forests and in your farmlands. Are all of you okay at all? Because I don't, I am struggling to understand how you people reason. The reason why I'm saying this is this. The, the gullible ones amongst you are the ones they are deceiving. They are deceiving all of you. And for some perverse reason, you tend to fall for it. But we have not fallen for it. And wonders shall never end. You saw the little boy that they were giving, they said they are giving him COVID-19 um, uh, vaccine. And I ask you in all honesty, there are pastors and truth tellers and men of God, I believe in Nigeria. Look at the hand of that boy. You've seen the pictures and the videos everywhere. Is that the hand of an 80-year-old man? How can all of a sudden, Usibajo is now older than Buhari? Look at the videos and look at the pictures. At this point, I begin to ask some of you, are you sure that your brain is working? Your brain cells is working? People say, oh, it is a conspiracy theory. All these things that you're saying about these people, and I'm saying to them, have you not seen the picture of Usibajo taking the so-called vaccine or malaria injection? I don't know. Look at the man they claim is Buhari. Look at his hand. Is that the hand of an 80-year-old man? Is Buhari richer than Bill Gates? Is Buhari richer than George Soros? George Soros is richer than the whole of Nigeria. Bill Gates, the same thing. So if it is money that, that, that caused this very old dying man to now turn into a 35-year-old man, 
How come Bill Gates cannot do it? Or George Soros? Or even Queen Elizabeth, for that matter? If they claim that the treatment that Buhari received that made him look this young was administered in, in London, the Queen is the Queen of England, the Queen of the United Kingdom. Why wouldn't she go through the same treatment? Why not? Why wouldn't Prince Philip go through the same treatment and become young again? That is how Nigerians and black people reason that give me cause for concern. If we continue this way, we can never ever build nor have any viable society, all of us together. And that is why it is very, very critical and very, very important that we do that which is right before God and man. And stop this from deceiving us. You are every head of state that took a vaccine all over the world. After taking the vaccine, they addressed their people. They spoke to the nation. Why is it that this one wearing an oversized face mask, of course, on top of Buhari, hyper-reality face mask, could not utter a word? Can't you ask yourself that question? He came to take his vaccine. Go and look at other heads of state. They take their own vaccine in public and they speak. This one is like a mannequin. He comes out, you will him out, and they do something and he goes back in again. That tells you that Buhari is no longer alive. Buhari is in a shallow grave in Saudi Arabia. He's dead. And that is why they're in a hurry. That is why this governor can say, I will not listen to Asarok. That governor will say, let's bring in more bandits. Let's settle them. That is why the government is disjointed and dysfunctional. Nobody's in charge. Obasanjo knows that nobody's in charge. I think he said that he may not agree that it's a Buhari double, but that the Buhari now in Asarok is not the one he used to know. How else do you want him to put it? He's been very promised. He wants Nigeria to survive so that can, him and his friends can continue to enjoy oil money. That's all. Oil money. That's nothing more, nothing less. Just oil money. Just oil money. So they can continue to enjoy oil money flowing from Biafra land. That's all. Not that they love you. Not that they love one Nigeria. Of course not. They don't. Nobody does. These are the things that you ought to know. And that's what we're telling you this very day. The time now is seven minutes to the top of the hour, regardless of where you're all over the world. That tells you that we are live and we are direct. And this very gospel is coming to you so that you may change. You may have a change of heart. You may have a change of way of reasoning. Where is your first lady, Aisha Buhari? Where is she? She is not in the country. For how many months now? For how many months, I ask of you? You claim you're a human being. When a white person is racist towards us, we start complaining. We don't like racism. But when they see the way we reason, they cannot help but be racist towards us. Can you believe that you have a country like the USA and Biden's wife decides to disappear for two, three, four months? You think Americans will keep quiet? You think that in a, in a, in a time of national crisis, of the of COVID-19 pandemic and and the ceaseless and endemic insecurity. You cannot even hear from somebody you claim is your president. And this was a man that when you Coppers visited him sometime in 2016, or was it in 2015, in his house in Katsina, he spoke against me, IPOB and their agitation. Without prompting, you think such a man will keep quiet in the face of what is going on right now. They all know. Wole is a, is, a, is a liar. They all know that Buhari is dead. Obasanjo is a liar. They know he's dead. Or Jesus of Kala and all the rest of them. They're all liars and deceivers. They know the idiot is dead. But all of you will keep deceiving yourselves. And that is why the Fulanese are killing you every blessed day. And when you rise up to fight against them, they become headers. When they attack you, they're headsmen. When you retaliate, they become headers. We don't want them in our land. The death of Buhari... And the, should I say, the, the relentless drive of the Janjaweed to conquer everybody else will make Nigeria a worse place than Somalia. And it's written. None of you can stop it. It doesn't matter how much you dialogue. It doesn't matter what you do. God has marked out Nigeria for destruction for what they did to his children. And all of you witness it. So that at the end of this very process, when Biafra comes, you give praise to God and to God alone and not to man. That's why we are here, to let you understand that the coming of Biafra is God's design, not that of man, not mine, not anybody else's.
but that the time has come. We must stand very tall, very strong, and very resolute. I'm sure all of you have heard what Dino Malaya said. You have heard about that the president is in trans is transition or transmission. I don't, he's in transition because his body is in Saudi Arabia. He's not buried in Daura, not yet. His body is there. And that's why Aisha is, is upset with them. Aisha packed her things and went to UAE to live there. Because she told them, bring back the body of my husband, give him a befitting burial. They said, no. They want to use the name of Buhari to conquer the rest of Nigeria. That's what I have done. But they have failed. And failed very, very woefully at that. And that is why this very truth must continue to be preached. If you have not seen it, go to my page. I think it is there. What do you know Malaya said? But I want to play what uh, a particular man said. And then I want to showcase the foolishness of your average Nigerian, the foolishness of Bishop Koka. I want to let the world understand how foolish a Nigerian is. Not from me, but I want all of everybody to listen to this very, very carefully, please, and tell me if Nigerians are not stupid. Listen. We have a confession that the media has not given appropriate attention. Yes, what is that? Kaubaraje Alaji. Alaji Kaubaraje. Was a leading chieftain of the APC. Yes. And he has confessed that they imported the foreign mercenaries who have become bandits. The APC imported foreign mercenaries. Baraje said it. Confessed. What evidence? What evidence do you need? Do you need? He has confessed mm -hmm. that they imported them for the elections. Yes. So, this is public. Mm -hmm. Why is the media not following up? Because Nigeria is corrupt. Why are we not asking for accountability? They can't ask because Nigerians are not intelligent. So not. it seems very clear to me mm -hmm. and to so many others. If you're in the public space, you hear people talking yes. and pointing fingers. The ruling party mm -hmm. is the direct sponsor of terrorism and insecurity in Nigeria. It was an Why interview did? granted by, by a so-called stakeholder in Nigeria. APC, the government, people are joining AP. I, I, you know, I don't want to speak against the Holy Spirit. At this point, I begin to say to God, there is no way a black man can be equal to a white man. It's impossible. You are aware. I don't know how to show it. This is the Mises High Reporters. I think I'll put it on my page after this. If you go to my page, you'll see it. The man spoke very brilliantly. Nobody has come to counter him. Baraje is alive. He opened his mouth and said, a part of APC said, we are the ones that brought them from the Sahel to come and kill you. They are fellow Nigerians. And after this, you say I'm a Nigerian. That is why I say that anybody, if once you say you're a Nigerian, you're sick in the brain. I never have regard for you as a human being because that means you cannot reason. I will play this once again, uninterrupted, so you can hear him very, very well. And I will start by asking him, I'm not going to ask him what he said, who is responsible for the insecurity in Nigeria. Who is to blame? Listen. We have a confession that the media has not given appropriate attention. Yes. Go ahead. What is that? Kaubaraje Alaji. Alaji Kaubaraje was a leading chieftain of the APC. He, chief of the APC. He has confessed. He has confessed. Baraje. The foreign mercenaries who have become bandits. Oh, he has confessed. How much more evidence do you need? He has confessed that they imported them for the elections. Oh. This is public. Why is the media not following up? Why are we not asking for accountability? So it seems very clear to me and to so many others. Mm -hmm. If you're in the public space, you hear people talking mm -hmm. and pointing fingers. Mm -hmm. The ruling party is the direct sponsor of terrorism and insecurity in Nigeria. My name is Martin Onobo. I said it. Martin Onobo. APC is the direct sponsor of insecurity and terrorism in Nigeria. Ask me for the evidence. Good. I just gave you confession of Kawu Baraje. Kawu Baraje, his confession is number one. Evidence. Number two. Number two evidence. Miyati Allah made a public statement mm -hmm. that if you want peace in your state, don't call any meeting. Mm -hmm. Provide land. For Fulanis in your state. Ultimatum 
From visitors. Yetiala. From terrorists. Yetiala is a collaborator with the ruling party. Yetiala. We had a report that the ruling party funded Mietiala to the tune of a hundred billion. You say that? I wasn't there when the payment was made. Mm -hmm. But 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 that's in the public domain. One Nigeria. An official report <laughs> that the government of Nigeria was going to establish a radio station. Radio station for Mietiala. A terrorist group. In collaboration with Mietiala. We have Fufu Day. The Fulani uh tribal dialect will be the language of communication do you understand it now they were saying this is for fulani people sorry for hausa people you know all these years when they were conquering you hausa they said hausa fulani we are hausa fulani but now they feel they have taken you over now they feel that they are at the at the at the at the cross of their conquest of nigeria they are now floating a radio station no longer in hausa language but in their native Fulani language, Fufude. What does that tell you? As an average Nigerian, I, I wonder when, maybe is there something in the cow? You know, they have sex with cows and after that they sell it to us and we eat. Maybe that is when they succeed in hypnotizing us. The, the interviewer was asking for evidence. Let me now give you the evidence. The, it was us that translated this evidence, now it's all over the place. It's gone viral. Now let us hear from the mouth of the Fulani terrorist that the APC brought in into Nigeria. Let us hear from them. I don't have one message at all. One day, it's Kim Daji at Adenshi, but Allah will give you a cinema. Allah will cry. Listen, is in house. I can't say she did it. Say no, ma. Sign your button for Bindiga Aki. What is serving? Thank you for the seven. Thank you for the seven. That's... Mm -hmm. If I'm lying. What did this man say? I will translate for you. He's on my Twitter. It. I don't know if it's on my Facebook page. That is why, he, uh, because of these things, that is why Facebook is busy blocking, banning, suspending people. What did this man say? I'll take off my glasses to read. This man said, I swear to the almighty Allah, that is the government, the same APC government that our brother was talking about earlier, that gave us arms. I am saying this for people that believe in one Nigeria. That is why I'm... Hi. Who are they? Who created this night? Who created these people that cannot reason very well? Let me read what this man said. I swear to the almighty Allah that is the government, that is APC government, so-called Buhari government, that is giving arms to us. Full and don't know what gone is. We are only headsmen. Cows don't give birth to guns. I swear to Allah, we are on our own and the government gave us AK-47. I am not afraid to say the truth. Bishop Koka, are you listening? All of you idiots that believe in one Nigeria, are you, are you listening? You morons, monkeys. All of you who are being deceived by this multicultural, multi-ethnic garbage, can you listen? The government that you are hoping to save you are the ones giving arms to those who have come to kill you. And you get up tomorrow morning and you say, believe in one Nigeria. That was why when Ozo One was under attack, that was why when these people, they gave guns to attack Nimbo, Ifani Uguani called the Enugu State Governor called Buhari many times. Buhari ignored his calls. Uguani called the commander of the two division. No one took his call. He called the commissioner of police for Enugu. No one took his call. But anytime IPOB is having meeting, you come to come and start shooting people. But when the same people were under attack by those that they are sponsoring, uh, they were nowhere to be found. 
Is that a type of country? Is that the type of country you wish to belong to? Let's be honest about everything. If this insecurity were being caused by a group of disgruntled Fulani businessmen, you can understand. If this insecurity were being caused by a group of, say, very retarded Fulani politicians of which there are many of them, I can understand. But insecurity is being caused by the government itself, the APC government. Our brother said it here, and uh, you think he's lying. The people that they get, do you know where they said that in front of Sheikh Gumi, Abubakar Gumi, he went to the forest to go and meet the bandits, and the bandits told him it was the government that gave us the guns. We don't know what guns are until they gave it to us. That's why I asked you, if they're coming all the way from Mali and from Niger, how did they cross the border with guns? If you claim that those that are raising us are from Niger Republic. So you don't have customs and immigration in the north anymore? Or because you see yourselves as one people, so there is no border patrol, no border policing, nothing. But you have closed the border now for nearly a year and a half. So the border is closed. And you're from the south and you're shouting one Nigeria. Do you see the depth of your foolishness? Can you see it? When I say it, it's not, it's not out of hatred. People say, oh, I, I don't like his style of agitation because I tell you the truth. A governor said, the governor of Bauchi State, we are bringing in Fulanese. We, have, we are coming to settle Fulani in Nigeria. He said it, he wasn't hiding. We are coming to settle Fulani in your land, in your villages. Do you know why that is possible? Because you believe in one Nigeria. If you are on your own, nobody can try it. It's called an act of war or invasion. But Fulani is carrying out an act of war and invasion into your territory because you are under one Nigeria. So in other words, they are using Nigeria is providing them a cover to carry out a conquest of an entire, should I say, ethnic nationalities across the zoo. Is it clear to you now? Do you now understand what we are saying? Bishop Koka is afraid. He's from Sokoto. He's a minority. So he thinks that when Nigeria breaks up, uh, Fulani will swallow them alive. But I want to tell him that we are all students of history. There is a group of, or there were a group of people called the Huguenots from France during the height of, um, of Reformation. They were being persecuted by the French authorities who were Catholic. People don't know that Roman Catholic fought with Anglican Church in those days. People don't know this, but that's, the, that's life. Do you know what happened? Britain, being a Protestant nation, offered amnesty or struck a deal with France to say, give me all your Protestants. We'll absorb them. They're called the Huguenots. And they came to Britain. That is where the lives of Sir Peter de la Bilie. De la Bilie is a French name. But his family settled in England. He rose to become a general and led the war in the Desert Storm. It was him that commanded the British forces in Desert Storm. He was, his ancestors were French, the Huguenots. So what, what I'm saying to Bishop Coker and all Northern Christian minorities today is this. On my honor and on my life, I swear before God Almighty in heaven that with the coming of Biafra, every Christian Northerner will be allowed to settle in Biafra land. So you see, Bishop Koka, you have nothing to be afraid of. You have a place where you can practice your faith without looking over your shoulder all the time, thinking who's, going to, who's coming to kill me. You will come to Biafra land and you will live there a very peaceful, fulfilled life in Biafra land. The same thing that the English did for the French Protestants, they're called the Huguenots. The same thing we are going to do for you. If you feel that you're threatened in the Sharia core north, and because of that, you think that having the east and the west in one Nigeria will save you as some kind of um, insurance against elimination by the crazy, mad, full and weed. You will come to Biafra land. We will give you asylum. You will stay there. Your generations will live and thrive. We are accommodating people. We welcome visitors. 
then you will see what Biafra is like in real life, not the miserable existence you have in Sokoto. You want to stay in a country where people are threatening your life because you spoke. You said your mind and they're threatening you. What I'm offering you is what happened in England, though. The same England telling you to talk about one Nigeria. There was a time that the lives of French Protestants were under threat in France. England send, said, give them to us, we'll take them. They were all sent to England. They are called the Huguenots. We offer you the same asylum today to Bishop Coca and to all endangered Northern Christians. You can all come to Biafra. We will accommodate you gladly. Gladly. I'm saying this live on air, so if I renege on this, you know, they said in, the internet never lies. They can go back and dig up this very video and say, he said this on the 8th of March, 2021. So you can come to us. This is the reason why everywhere the ginger weed are dealing with us. They always come to your village and appoint one person as somebody. You know, one thing about you people is this. You always think that tomorrow is going to be better. But in Nigeria, tomorrow ever, never, ever gets better. Instead, it gets worse. And we are offering you a way out. People were asking for confirmation that Nigeria army and police are colluding with Fulani terrorists. You know, I, it was on this platform that I called for OPC to take over from Amoteku. And thankfully, they have taken over. And there are results. There are results. I think earlier yesterday, or was it today, the OPC arrested a Fulani warlord. You know, for us, we don't have time for arrest. We arrest you, of course, and then I think they handed him over to police. When we arrest you, we hand you over to God. God will judge you. They arrested a Fulani warlord, Wakili. Handed him over to police. Police took him to hospital. The same police in Biafra land, they will shoot innocent IPOB family members. If they go to hospital and abduct them and the doctor and send them to Abuja to be locked up. Do you understand that? That is what they have been doing. I don't know who is call I don't know who is calling me. I don't know what for. It's not an interactive session, so don't call me. They came to Olo, they went to Anambara, took they shot people, they took them to Abuja, took the doctor as well, treating them to Abuja. In the West, they apprehended a terrorist, they killed a murderer, a, a rapist, a bandit. Handed the bandit over to the police. The police took him to hospital for treatment. Specialist hospital. What other evidence do you need that the police and the army are colluding with those that they imported to come and kill you? And you wake up in the morning and you say you're a Nigerian. Are you, are you not ashamed of yourself? Don't you have any shame within you? God almighty in heaven. I've never seen a people as daft and as foolish as this. They took him. He was arrested by OPC. You know what they said? Those that, are, those that arrested this man, he said, or your police are sure of diligent prosecution of suspected criminals. The criminals now are the OPC men that arrested the bandit. <laughs> Nigeria is astonishing. You arrested a rapist, a mass murderer, a killer. And the land grabber took him to the police. The police now arrested you. Took the man to hospital. Beat you all of you up and put you in the cell. The say police is your friend. Anyway. Uh, I thank God that there are some these guardian angels that came. I don't know where they came from. They are called unknown gunmen. I don't know where they came from. Maybe they are the spirit of all those killed by the police and the army. And they are avenging the death of the people that the police and the army killed. They are called unknown gunmen. I don't know who they are. I don't know where they come from, but they are fighting for the poor. They are like Robin Hood, but in this case, they are not robbing the poor, the rich to pay the poor, no. They are robbing the criminals, the murderers of their own lives. Murderers in the police and the army. People don't know what is coming, do they? They have no idea. I, I feel sorry for the zoo. They have no idea. Any day that all of you gang up, to support your one Nigeria garbage.
the more you're digging your collective graves. Nigeria can never ever be fixed. It's broken beyond repair. Can never be fixed. Look at Sultan of Sogo, they're talking rubbish. The spiritual leader, whatever rubbish he is of the zoo. Sultan of Sogo, that he was in the army. That war is not good. But you Fulanese are the ones living war on everybody. You took over the whole of Plateau. And you came down into Benue. Your people were at also one, massacring people. You then never talked about war. As soon as we rose up and said enough is enough, you know, now this war language starts to, to, to come into your lips. Do you think we are foolish? Do you think we are, go and bring all the BBCs of this world, every hire, every, every propagandist for neocolonialists, gang them, bring them together against Biafra agitation, you're wasting your time. Bring them against ESN, you're wasting your time. Arrest all you like. But I'm just warning them, if you're a policeman involved in the arrest of innocent people, all, we, all I need to do is to go down on my knees and pray and ask God, please, may unknown gunmen locate you and they will find you. Because God answers my prayers. So all those police stations involved in all this raid know that your turn is coming. It's only a matter of time it will come. Since you want anarchy, you will get anarchy. Since that is what you want. You people, you don't like uh, people that play it gently by the rules. No, not in the zoo. That is how you have been taking over our land, raping our women, abducting us and killing us. We came out at a well, you killed us for no reason. Shia people came out at Abuja, you shot them for no, for no reason, for no discernible reason. And uh, all of you saw uh, soldiers with live bullets killing people in broad daylight. No major news outlet carried in the world. They've bribed all of them. I'm saying it on camera. And I wish that the U.S. Congress can call me to testify. The American ambassador, that woman, took bribe from Nigeria. Nigeria bribes every ambassador that comes to Nigeria. They give you loads of money. So you will never report what is happening in Nigeria. You don't know that. I'm saying it live on camera. I wish they can call me in America come and testify. I will do so. The British High Commissioner is, is as corrupt as the devil. That woman. She was the one that was responsible for the murder at Lake. When she went to see Tinubu, I warned everybody, look at this woman, the army will open fire. Not up to six hours to open fire, that woman. That's another line. All of you are just looking. But anyway, you are, some, most of you are blind, you cannot see. And when I'm more. We see things that the mere mortals cannot see. That is why Elohim is with us. That is why everything I say comes to pass. It must happen. It must come to pass. I told them that when I was, when we were giving thanks and praises to Elohim, I told them that this horn that we have, this trumpet that we are blowing, anybody who hears it in Asarok will go deaf. How many days? And there was fire in Asarok for the very first time. The zoo will be destroyed. Not that we may just get Biafra. So that when this story is written, our children will know that God did it, not man. Man put their faith in their chariots. You know, Britain, you have your, uh, a member of the UN uh, Security Council. You're very strong. You're powerful. Uh, all these criminal U.S. ambassadors coming to Nigeria. Uh, yeah, you have you have money. You are U.S. You will always support Fulani. You people are openly supporting terrorists because of money. Because they bribe you. Because Halliburton has all your concessions. Because there, there is a shell and everything. Everybody's milking Biafra because of that. It is better we support terrorists. They will kill the innocent. And you are diplomats. Your diplomats presiding over the slaughter of the innocent. You cannot speak the truth. We are in the middle of a war. The Fulanese have levied war on every indigenous population, ethnic group in Nigeria. You all of you can say it. All you can say is invite the Sarakin or, or Sarakin Fulani Lagos. Not the Oba of Lagos, no. Sarakin Fulani Lagos means the supreme Fulani ruler in Lagos. Because the U.S. ambassador has taken money from Nigeria. 
very soon her tour of duty will come to an end and she will go. She will become a multimillionaire. That is why they all want to come to Nigeria. Because Fulani will pay very well to suppress the news, to stop the truth from going out. And all of you will suffer if you don't repent. You will suffer. Mark my words somewhere, you will suffer if you don't repent from your evil ways. You take money from murderers and from killers to suppress the truth. Biden doesn't know what is happening in Nigeria because they rely on the ambassador to feed them accurate information. And that is not happening because they've been bribed. And that is why people are dying in Nigeria. Nigeria is the only place in turmoil, not making it onto the front pages of newspapers all over the world. Nobody talks about it because they are all compromised. They've been bribed. We don't need your one Nigeria to survive. They try, can you imagine the nonsense? They brought in their food blockade. They said we'll not send food to the south. They are appreciable goods. So the items got spoiled in the north. The government now turned around to pay them almost 500 billion. They are the ones that said they will not sell their goods to the south. Their goods are now rotten in the north. And the government paid them composition of nearly 500 billion. And you're in one Nigeria. Tomorrow morning you idiotically wake up in the morning and say, I'm a Nigerian. As I said before, you know, before I used to blame white people for racism, I no longer blame them for it. Because we are the cause of racism. Our stupidity as, the bl as black people is responsible for the way we're being treated all over the world. Very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. We don't need them to survive. We don't need them. And we can give them the oil and gas for free. As I've said before, allow me to repeat. The oil, apart from granting citizenship to every northern Christian, I mean Kor North, I mean the Sharia, Arewa, Janjaweed North, you will all live in Biafra land where you can practice religion without fear or favor. Another thing we are going to do is to pipe free oil and gas across the whole of West Africa. In Biafra, Oduduwa will receive oil and gas for free. You see, Benin Republic, oil and gas for free. Togo will receive oil and gas for free. Ghana, the same. All the way to heaven knows where, I think, um, Western Sahara. Do you know why? Because we want the economies of all these countries to grow as well because they're going to buy our goods and services. They will buy our goods and services. That is why we need the economies to grow as well. A Biafra will offer free oil and gas to the entire West African coastal region. To tell you, we don't need oil and gas to survive as a people. We are not fighting for Biafra because of oil and gas. We are fighting because it is the will of God and we must be free. We are free people. We were free before the white man came and we shall be free once again. And as I've been telling people, and they do not, or some will not understand or hope to understand, what we are doing is of the spirit. The likes of showing come or stand up to speak the truth. Oh, Basanjo, you must speak the truth. Tell us where Buhari is. You know where his grave is, is at? You can point that out for us. Tell us. Free yourself of that very burden. Show Inka the same thing. Show Inka you are campaigning for them. Campaigning for Buhari. Until your carrot and cabbage clashed with the with Fulani cattle. You now realized that there is danger in the land. All these years, all the Fulani insurgency and incursion into the south, he never said a word. People look up to you to speak the truth. You never said a word until they came to your farm and ate your carrot and your cabbage instead of complaining. Typical black people. Until something affects you, it's nothing. That mindset must change. And that is where Biafra must come. And when Biafra does come, everybody will be free. If Biafra is not free, none of you is going to be free. And that is why I have said it before and allow me to repeat. We have come to set all of you free. And if you allow this nonsense to continue, you'll be sunk. If you have not gotten your Somali visa, go and get it now. Because the zoo is gone. 
and the hell has arrived. Thank you very much for listening. From me, from here, good evening. <laughs>